Hi, everybody. <clears throat> um, I'm about five minutes early, but I just wanted to get this up here. Oh my gosh, I look so tired. I'm also sitting like straight in front of this makeup light and um, my nerves are a little shot. Again, I, this just makes me so nervous. It's just kind of crazy that I would be so nervous in front of a live video. Hi, Alina. Hi, my friend, my beautiful friend who I'm so proud of. I'm so proud of you. You're like, you know, my little goddess who I'm just, oh, you're amazing and your children are beautiful. And Robin, hi, Robin. My friends, and Robin is in Florida and Elena's in Charleston. And hi, Ashley. You guys are so great um, to join me on this. Ashley's been a longtime client um, of the studio, her and her husband, Marcus, who I totally love. And, um, oh, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on because I can't actually read what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robin is a fantastic makeup artist in Florida and Fort Lauderdale and um, I'm so happy to have her um, join me and she's always my partner in crime whenever we go to the artist summit and hi Kate I'm glad you're watching too and Jasmine Glory my buddy Jasmine Glory is our amazing um, hairdresser extraordinaire, hairstylist extraordinaire at the studio who happens to be behind the bar. So when you're in the studio, um, really, you got you guys have got to start booking with Jasmine Glory for hair. Um, you know, we we're gonna be doing more blowouts and updos, and oh, uh, you we you should see what she does. And she's like, she's an inc she cuts hair like a badass. Hey, Trace and. Tracy, my travel buddy who gives us so much um, exciting uh, it, it, whenever she's traveling. She just, I love you, Tracy. I'm glad you're here. And Wendy, Wendy, who has been watching my videos, who's been in the studio, who whose son and daughter got married in D.C. Uh, got it like over, over a year ago now, which is crazy. And I got to go to D.C. and take care of them. But Wendy has been coming in the studio and just watching everything I'm doing and come for lessons and tutorials and her brows are rehabbed. And she um, also got a compliment this week after coming in and switching a few things around after watching the tutorial from her dermatologist. So that's pretty cool. Um, that makes me really happy when people can take some of the advice and some of the things that I'm saying and apply it and, and, uh, and make their lives better. So and you look better. You look better. Your lives are better. I really have this belief that when a woman feels beautiful, that she's capable of anything. So that's just, um, you know, my little input for the moment. I'm going to keep an eye on this time here. Do I look okay here? Can you guys, I got two more minutes before I start this. So I'm just kind of, I'm going to give it two more minutes to just get started. Um, yeah, anybody got any questions? Do you want me to cover anything? Those of you who are watching, are you just gonna let me, let me just uh, <laughs> ramble? <laughs> oh, Robin. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you all saw my post um, about International Women's Day yesterday. Um, I just am really present to how amazing my women are in this, in, uh, uh, guys, you just, the women that I'm surrounded by, I, I can't say enough. Um, in fact, while I'm sitting here, I'm just going to show you, I wasn't going to take this because I've got it set up perfectly, but i got to show you stuff. So I'm going to have to turn this around. Okay. So this is my, oh, there's my lovely young picture of my daughter. How beautiful is she? But this is my, um, scarf that I have tacked up that is from, uh, Pat Mitchell, who I went on safari with, and there's all these incredible quotes. And what I realized when I got the scarf and when she released her book, Becoming a Dangerous Woman, which is all about, you know, what it takes to really change, make change in this world, particularly for women, I realized that I knew a bunch of people on this scarf. So I tacked it up to, to be inspired by every day. And so 
the first one who is, you know, one of my sheroes in all of the world, which is Eve Ensler, who started the Vagina Monologues, and you've heard me talk about her, but she also started One Billion Rising, which is a movement to end violence against women and girls because there are one billion women, one billion who will be raped and beaten in her lifetime. Hey, Laura. And so she started this movement. I have been lucky enough to um, be around her for the past 12 or 13 years now. And I get to do her makeup whenever she lets me, whenever we're in the same place. And then this is uh, Christine DeShul, and she is in charge of uh, the, the city of joy in the Congo. And then my son, oh my gosh, hi, my love, hi. And um, next, so Christine is Saving the Women in the Congo. And if you've not seen the documentary City of Joy, be sure to go and watch it. Have a few drinks before you do. Um, you know, you all need to be informed on what's going on in the whole, in the world, because it's insane. And then Pat Mitchell, who, this woman right here is one of the first women, one of the first, sorry, um, approving a few people to join our, to join our podcast. Um, Pat Mitchell's who I went on safari with. She's known pretty much as the first woman in media. She does not like to call attention to herself. I like to say she's the woman behind all women. So look up patmitchellmedia.com. And then this is Megan Falone, who I went on safari with as well. And she, you know, when I first got there and I was reading about the women I was going with, I was like, okay, who are these women? And I started laughing going, you know, Okay, Allie, you put makeup on people for a living and you do their brows. Um, Megan uh, works for Barefoot College. She is the, I believe she is the president. I'm not sure if that's her exact title, director, president, not sure. But it's a nonprofit that basically teaches women in third world countries to build solar panels to bring back to their villages, and I mean villages, and a lot of these women were divorced, um, are kind of outcasts of their villages, and she's taught them how to build solar, pa pa solar panels and has provided electricity to over a million people in Western Africa, India, and some other third world places, and I'm proud to call her my friend, and uh, I just adore her. And then, of course, Jane Fonda. I mean, seriously, what a badass to be inspired by every day. She's just amazing. So here's just some quotes that are from some other women who have, um, I got lucky enough to be able to meet at Pat's book launch in New York. And this is pretty awesome, which is, this is from Abigail Disney. And yes, um, you know, part of the Disney family. And she's, you know, the older I get, the more everyone can kiss my ass. I kind of feel that way too. Um, and the older I get, I definitely feel that way. And then, you know, I just hope I grow more dangerous and, and disgraceful with each passing year. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, I don't want to say disgraceful. Uh, just, you know, not so concerned. All right, I'm just going to, while I'm in here, let's just show you a little bit of my room. This is um, my vanity. So I've set it up a little differently. But again, I'm showing you the real deal, people, because... This is, you know, reality. And I brought the skincare in, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But this is my this is my room that I, you know, when my kids left, I was like, I'm taking over a, get a ready room, which is also has my treasures in it. And I actually had a friend client paint me that, uh, which is just amazing. And this is just, you know, things I hang up that from wherever I've traveled all over the world right now. And I love my candles. If you can't tell, I got a bunch more. And the Beauty of Hope candles are in my office. Um, but this one I'm burning particularly is from um, is from Nice. And oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's uh, really yummy. And then just my travels. And um, Rosie Gillespie, she made this for me, which is when I went on my surf surfing journey, and that's me surfing, so that's pretty awesome. And I have my hats from all over the world, one's from Colombia, one's from Nice, one's from my mommy. And then here's all my scarves. You know, I love my scarves and a uh, wetsuit. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to really show you. My onesie for my party. And this is my room. This is my ready room. So, okay. All right. So I guess I'm going to get busy now. I'm giving us a couple minutes. So this is my setup. Um, I'm going to pull this drawer out. And I've got my palettes. 
all my eyeshadow palettes. Um, I do believe in custom colors rather than pre-made sets. I only have one and it's actually in the back because it sucks and the pigments are terrible, but it was free and I know how we all like free stuff. Um, and this is basically my drawer of stuff. So not too much different from what I travel with. I have some additional eyeshadow palettes that I've just kind of hung on to. I don't really know why I have them. And then I put my brushes in my cups and those are my bigger face brushes. Those are my pencils and my mascara. If you use that XLXL, it's definitely better to have it in a cup. Um, I have eye brushes and then I have some brushes I don't use, but I haven't disposed of them yet. I've already pulled out just like a few things because I decided I wanted to do kind of like this red inspired lip. Because as you know, I'm going to um, uh, Scotland tomorrow. And so I want to kind of, I want to kind of play with that a little bit because I like a little more color. When I'm traveling. Um, so uh, I'm going to be pulling and working from there. So let's start. I'm going to put this down and see if I can't get it situated. You can't believe how much it takes to actually set this stuff up. Okay. Can everybody see me okay? Pretty good. Okay. Oops. See these tripods. These are, I have such a healthy respect for anybody who does this because it's like, it's a lot of prep make sure that it lines up right and when I put my makeup on in this damn mirror I'm hoping you can still see me okay okay all right all right okay here we go okay so I prep my face um I actually did a mask before I'm a pretty big advocate of using masks I don't usually use them on a daily basis but since uh I'm gonna be um uh in the mirror I thought I would do that so let's start with skincare um you know, I just saw some statistics this morning, which I knew was coming down the pike, but, but essentially that color cosmetics are in a decline. You know, I believe we've oversaturated this market. And again, you're going to see how much little, you saw how little makeup I wore last week. Um, it's about going to be the same this week. I'm going to do a little bit of a green smoky eye. Um, but skin is it, people. Skin is really the, skin is really, hi, Franziska. Hello, my friend. Um skin's really where it's at. So I can't say this enough. I, I don't, when somebody's in my chair, I'm really not trying to sell you anything. So it, I'm like, when people look at my skin and they go, what do you do? I'm like, it's my skincare and it's my foundation. So the skincare that we use is organic skincare. I've been an organic skincare fanatic since the beginning. My early days uh, at Lancome when I started when I was 18, um, I had people ask me all the time, what's in the product? And you can never read these chemical names. And I had an educator look me in the face and you know when I asked her I said what's in the ingredients and she looked at me she held her finger up she actually like waved her finger at me and she said your job is to sell the benefits of the product you are not a chemist and immediately I was thought something bad is in this stuff and you know sure enough it's come out all of the bad things ingredients and stuff that are in the product we were always told it never penetrates the skin the molecular structure is too big now we have penetration enhancers we have all kinds of things that they make the molecular so so yes it's going in your skin so you really want to pay attention to your ingredients we use this absolutely beautiful skincare line that's a small boutique brand out of Australia where the products are all, oh, thanks, Rob, um, where the products are all pretty amazing. So the first thing I did was I cleansed today. Um, I got this. I don't know if you saw me open my box from, this is from Morocco. And this is this, um, it's, it's, it says it's Savon, so it's soap. But it's unbelievable. It The foaming, I need to know what this is. And I know we need to see if we can carry it. Because as a cleanser, I love it. It's foamy and it's moisturizing. So I tried that today. And then after I use that, because um, I'm pretty obsessed, is this lactic gel cleanser. Ooh, I'm already turning it on. And my Clarisonic. Um, I've been using a Clarisonic for about 10 years now. Um, I do have larger pores and oily skin. And it tends to get clogged pretty easily. So the lactic gel cleanser is very clean it helps to exfoliate on a deeper level and then i use the delicate brush on my clarisonic and i use it in my shower i don't really use it at night very much but i do use it in the morning um and if i'm in new york or traveling and i just happen to feel nasty okay so then once i use that i use this toner i am a toner fanatic i pretty much buy toner all over the world i love it i probably have seven bottles in there this one from Organic Spa is citrusy and it's beautiful in the morning. So it's kind of like my go-to in the morning. 
And then I use vitamin C serum. Vitamin C, this is one of, uh, I would say, one of the most important things for your skin. It promotes skin turnover and helps with texture, keeps your skin smooth, and it brightens. So go to. Next, uh, I talked about the Biohydra. The Biohydra is a serum that is hyaluronic acid along with some other really great benefits that helps to plump and keep moisture in your skin. In the summertime, that's almost all I use. I don't even really use much other moisturizer other than a, the Kula Primer, which I think I have over here. Um, that or the drops. Um, so in the summertime, I'll just pretty much use those two. But because we're still in the middle, middle of winter, even though I guess it's gonna be 60 something degrees today, um, I use this rosehip oil. I also use this at night. This right here is where you, you're seeing my skin really glow. I I love this product. It's healing. It is moisturizing. It reduces redness. It gives your skin a healthy glow. This right here, if you have not tried this, I am telling you, get it in your routine and have it on hand. You're, you will thank me on and on and on. And then I have on my eye treat, which um, I have really dry eyes, even though my whole life I've had oily skin. The eye treat is one of the absolutely best uh, moisturizing products for around your eye. It has avocado oil and a bunch of other ingredients that are just make your skin feel, make your eyes feel so, so, so good. And then this is the um, Tamanu that I was talking about that comes in a roller. I have the extra ginormous size. Uh, I use it definitely around my eyes. I use as much stuff around my eyes as I can. I can't say enough about it. Okay, so that's my prep. Um, also, just as a little side note, uh, we have a new esthetician, Crystal. We actually have three crystals in the studio right now. Uh, but Crystal O and Crystal A and Stephanie are going to be doing mini facials for 30 bucks. So for $30, you get a mini facial and you can try all this stuff out. Okay. So the, I can't, you know, a lot of times people are like, I want to see how this feels. They will give you one-on-one -on -one attention, look at your skin laying on the bed. You also get a little rubbed a little bit and, um, and I might even offer a little deal on skincare. I haven't decided yet if you come and get a mini facial and decide you want to try some of this line. Okay. So I'm going to take this off now. <laughs> Okie dokie. And, you know, write your questions below if you have any questions. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is this is this brush that is a white jumbo buffer. Originally, I bought it to see if it would work with our three in one. And it still does work with a three in one for certain, certain skin. And when I get to uh, my three in one tutorial, um, when I get my three in one tutorial, I'm going to show all the different brushes that you can use because different brushes, different effects. But this was sold as a facial brush. And I'm like, facial brush? I know people have been trying to sell facial brushes for a long time. But I'm going to show you, and you it's, 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 you can see it. When I go to rub this into my skin, I put that oil on, and the oil has a tendency to just sit on the top of the skin. When you go to use this, it pushes it into the skin, and it doesn't stay on the brush but it just gets absorbed beautifully into the skin. So, and you can see, I'm just kind of rubbing in circular motions. It also gives your face a little massage and do not forget your neck, um, really important, okay? All right, good. Okay, so here we have it. I am ready to start. Next, okay. Um, I like to just always brush my brows out just when I start um, brushing your brows or just like brushing your hair or brushing anything else is, you know, people don't, don't brush their brows enough and they really need to be brushed to stimulate growth and all that. And then I am going to, first things first is my primer. Um, I use this in the studio before every brow session. I used it when I was in New York. Um, I'm going to take it. It's going to help to set my brows in place. Okay, so, you know, it, it comes out white, and then I'm going to brush it through again, and it's going to disappear, but you can see how it's holding my brows completely in place, and I was laminated a few weeks ago. It's time to be laminated again, and I also probably need to be colored too, but it's probably not going to happen before I leave on my trip. Okay, so you can see I'm just brushing in the direction of the hair and over. 
Okay, all right, so brows are in place. I'm not gonna fill them in yet. Um, so if you remember the last time I talked about putting your lipstick on first. So the first thing I'm gonna do before foundation, before anything, is I'm gonna use this um, Garnet Lip um, Stain. So lip stains come in, they come out, they come in, they come out. I happen to be a huge fan of lip stains. They stay on your lip. You wanna get them on before you add lipstick or add anything else on top and you want them to set. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit on. Oh, see, oh, look at this, I'm already making a mess. Look at that. Oh, did I just kill myself? I don't know. I think I did. Anyway, I'm bleeding. How funny, I don't know what I did. How about that? See, there's always something with me. Tell you guys. Okay. So, I am bleeding. I had, you know, a little bit of some chin stuff, and now I just scratched myself. I don't know how I did that. Look at how at that. That's pretty. Has anybody ever done this? I'm just going to use my little thing. See, there's just never a dull moment, right? But I guess this is what real life is when you're like, oh, well, let's do my makeup and then make your chin bleed. Oh my God, that's so funny. And I want to scratch myself. Huh. Okay. All right. We'll be covering that up. Okay. So, um, so I've got my lip stain on. I'm going to put a little more and you can see how natural this is. This is in Garnet. And I love this. I love this. See, it's just a real hint of color. Oh my God, I cannot believe I'm bleeding. Okay, next. Uh, I am going to pull out my three-in-ones. Okay, so I have two colors. I have my soft beige and I have my ivory. And the brush I'm going to use is this Stiff Stippler Complexion Brush. Uh, and I might even show you... Um, an application with a little bit how about I show you with the um, foundation brush which will again add more um, product on the skin which I'm gonna need now apparently since I've decided to stab myself okay so next is and I put descriptions up in the online store so that you can kind of see my descriptions of the colors so if you go to the large size, and again, you might be a combination of two colors like I am. Totally fine if you've got two colors. It can be totally normal. And I'm just kind of blending everywhere. I'm not being so specific, you guys. I'm just getting it on. And sometimes when you don't have a lot of time using the bigger brush to lay more product down, it's totally cool. So I've got one down. I'm going to take the brush and I am still bleeding and I'm going to blend it through and I know last time I think I did my eyes first and then did my foundation but I just decided I was going to do it this way but again no hard fast rules right okay so that's blended in now I'm going to take the next color and I'm going to blend that in I don't think I'm dragging like blood all over my face I don't know what I did. That was pretty good for my first freaking video. Second video to make myself bleed in it, my God. Okay, so there we have it. So you can see it was that simple, that freaking simple. Um, easy peasy. So now I'm gonna buff it. All right, so same thing using a buffer complexion brush. This one is rather fantastic. I acquired it at a makeup show and it's got both my flat and my buff for under my eyes, which you'll see in a minute. All right, there's my skin. And I'm still bleeding. Okay, and I haven't put any concealer on but I've got myself blended under here. So you can see, you know, again, the three one is designed to just be so, so easy and I'm smiling. So I'm getting, making sure nothing's sitting in the lines. And now I'm ready. And you can see my lips are on now. They're not going anywhere. And that's like 
so so freaking easy right there right i mean all right next we're gonna tight line so i even got a brand new black pencil because my other one was like a little nub so i got my black pencil and we're gonna tight line so remember i did this the last last week and the reason for this is to define my eyes so i'm going to define them and where we're going to go with it is directly under the lash line can you all see this because i'm trying to look in my mirror because i actually have a mirror now i discovered that if you squint you can get it on easier and don't poke yourself so there how about that look at the difference can you see that you see where i went with it Okay, great. Next. One on the other side. Terrific. All right, very good. That's on now. So a lot of times if I'm in a hurry, that's, I do that, I add mascara, I go. I also smear just a little bit on my lid. So, I'm just gonna take a little lid brush and I'm just gonna smooth it off. Sometimes I don't even really care. And the added bonus is you make your lash line a little darker, but it's not really gonna matter in the in the long term. So I'm just kind of blending where it's transferring underneath because I haven't applied any powder yet. So that's on. All right, what do you think of the tight lining? Pretty cool, huh? All right, all right, good. So next, still bleeding. Oh my goodness. I don't even know. It's like a cat scratched me. Okay. I know it's really distracting. <laughs> okay, next. Um, brow highlighter. Okay, we talked about this last time. This goes up underneath the brow. Just drawing it on. And then you're going to use your finger and you're going to blend it in. Also, check out my beautiful nails from Mindy. She did a beautiful job. I got some plaid inspired to go to Ireland and Scotland which next week's tutorial will be in Ireland and Scotland. Okay. So I'm blending with my finger. And again, sometimes don't have enough time. I just leave it as is and don't apply anything else on top of it. Next, I'm going to take this brush, which remember we talked about using a white brush so that you know that that's for your highlighter area. And you can see I am smoothing back and forth white windshield wiper strokes and I'm just going to go underneath the eye too. So again, have not ha applied powder yet. I'm about to pull out my powder, which is my clear shine. And I got a new one just for you because of course I blew mine up because it was at the end. So I'm taking the clear shine and these are all refillable compacts, everybody. This compact has been around for a long time. I've lost its mirror and I'm loading my brush. So uh, what I have down here, I'm not going to switch this around, but I have a towel down here. And I always have a towel out when I'm working space. And I'm going to go underneath the brow right here and underneath my eye. And smooth out this whole area. Okay? So this was a surprise to a lot of you that I don't use... Uh, on a daily basis that I don't use in eyeshadow color. I really believe in making it look like skin. You want your skin to look like skin. And so hence the effect on skincare and in using this silica based powder that uh, does not have any pigment to it. It just takes off the shine. So you can see I'm going all the way around my eyes and I haven't even added concealer yet. So there you have it and then I'm just gonna take a little bit and I'm going to just powder down the rest of my face and I'm gonna smile while I'm doing it there we have it okay Ta-da! okay what do you think all right, good. I'm going to put my stuff back. So three and one. And I will put all this stuff. If you didn't know, last week's tutorial, I went and I put everything, including this video or the video from last week, in the online store with a link to all the products I used. I didn't get a chance to put all the brushes in there, but I will be working on that this week. So that is going in. And so is, I might leave my powder out. I'll leave my powder out. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to fill in my eyebrows. So just a little bit 
you know, I talk about level one, level two, level three. I just want to kind of put a little bit on here and I'll adjust it as needed if my eyeshadow appears kind of dark. But again, I waited a little bit for that primer and now I'm filling in. I'm just going in the direction. The fibers help to pick up a little bit of that hair and you can see how it just defined each little hair. It doesn't look like I have product in there. I haven't blocked out my brow. I'm only a fan of using pencils just where you need it. You don't use pencils to fill in the brow. You only use the pencils where you don't have brow and you're trying to create the illusion of a line that you don't have. So brow fiber in fawn, that is the color that I use. Okay, next, so now we're ready to move on to some eyes. And like I said, I am a little green inspired today. So I'm gonna tease you and show you a liquid shimmer uh, in a color that we no longer have, which kind of stinks. Um, I don't know, it doesn't even, does it have a name? I don't even know what it says, but anyway. Uh, it's got a little khaki color to it. So I'm going to just put this on my lid. But it is going to be St. Patrick's Day. And I am going to be in Scotland. I will not be in Dublin for St. Patrick's Day, but I will be in Scotland. And so I might want to wear a little bit of some green inspired stuff. I got a Celtic knot shirt. It's got some green Celt Celt knots, so plan on wearing that. It's a little prep. There. I should probably done that next week. Okay, so now I'm gonna let that dry for just a second, and you can see it's not perfect. And this is a lot of times where people will stop and they'll be like, oh, you know, why does why is it all smeared? Because you have to blend and the importance of brushes, I just can't say enough. Hey Zoe, you still loving your brows? Okay. Um, Zoe trusted me and came and got her brows tinted for the first time and she looks so freaking great. She was so nervous and I'm really proud that you trusted me because you've got pretty fabulous brows. They're going to be perfect without you having to do anything because that's really the point. The point is with the brows is I want to get them to the point where you don't have to do anything. Um, okay, next, um, bronzer. So again, the dual bronzer. This was one of the things that I was sharing how much I love the last time. There's both sides of it. So one's a matte side and one is a, uh, and one is a um, brown raspberry color. Um, and I like to use, let's see, I try it at home. I try out everything you guys. So I get tons of stuff from different manufacturers, different vendors, lots of different makeup, and I'm always trying it to see the hype, the if the brushes are great, if they're going to be easy for you to use, because that's what the most important thing is I can get a great brush to apply on you, but if you can't easily use it at home, then it's kind of like, what's the point? So the brushes that I've chosen in the studio really reflect the ease of use for, for public consumption. Um, there are some other brushes, like this was one that was given to me as a gift. It's a Royal and Ling Nickel. We went through a ton of different brushes. I opted to not get this, but for my own use, because you guys, if you see how much I have, rather than testering out and bringing stuff home, I'm just going to use what's given to me because I know how to use them and they're easy for me because I'm a makeup artist. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to do, I don't know why we have such a bad connection right now. Um, I'm going to load this brush three times. My towel is in front of me. That's two and three. Uh, so the paint on the wall analogy, I use this a lot. But if you were, imagine you were painting on a wall, you would have to saturate that brush. You would not go into a paint roller and haphazardly roll the paint and throw it on the wall. You would be very deliberate in your motion of filling that paint roller with the paint and getting it on the wall sufficiently. It's the same thing with makeup. I'm gonna reiterate that about 100 times because it's the number one mistake that I see when people are applying. So as you can see, making a fish face, and I'm going underneath my cheekbone there, and now I'm gonna blend. And I'm gonna use this one for blending again. And you can see how it makes just a beautiful, healthy glow. It 
There you have it. Okay. And by putting the lips on first, since I do have a little bit more color, it allowed me to not overdo it with my cheeks because I really just applied a little bit. And you can see how that just like really enhanced my coloring and brought it all together. So, you know, I give the analogy of if you took a black and white picture of yourself. So if we turned this black and white, right, what would the level be between my lip color and my cheek? Is it around the same? And I would say it's around, it's a little bit lighter, which is good. I don't want my cheekbones as dark as my lips. Since I have a garnet color on, you know, we wanna work that. So I'm gonna leave that for now and I'm gonna go back to my eyes and I am going to use a somewhat fluffy brush and this brush right here. And we just ordered a bunch of different brushes that are wonderful for blending creams. But all that I'm doing is now that it's dried is I am blending, right? And um, remember about I'm not dragging it down this way. I'm also really working to go in towards my nose. So you can see how it just kind of, when you, when you work with it and you take that lid color and you blend it up, it will hit almost the perfect, perfect placement for above your eyes. So you don't have to work so hard at a crease or you don't have to work so hard at other products. And I am gonna add a shadow just for a little bit of intensity. All right, what do you guys think? Okay, very good. All right, so uh, if I just decided I was gonna leave it like, hi, okay, we're back. Sorry, I don't know why our internet connection is keeps falling off. It's in the middle of the day. So now I'm applying my Baroque pencil, which is kind of like a goldy color, and I'm doing a little bit underneath my eyes. I still haven't put concealer on. And I am going to blend that down with a little bit of a blending brush for underneath my eyes, size of the brush, size of the space. I happen to love little pointed fluffy brushes for under the eyes and for smoothing out liner. And you can see what a difference that just made, right? Just like a little bit. It's just pretty amazing. And again, I don't even have any, I have liquid shimmer on and powder and a brow highlighter and I've tight lined. Um, so you know, this is pretty, pretty good for like, this is three minutes. This, this, if I wasn't talking and maybe one time we'll put a, put a cat, a timer up and you can actually I'll shut up and we'll time me. I can get this looking out the door in three minutes. Okay. Next. Um, oh, the reason for not doing the concealer until last is because I'm going to spit everything and I need to clean up. And if I put that concealer on, it's just going to attract all the product underneath there. So I just don't understand why I keep losing this. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. Um, next, I'm putting on some highlighter. And today I've decided to use this rose gold highlighter gel stick. It's really one of my favorite things. And I'm going to use my white brush because that's what I use for highlighter. And I'm just buffing it in. And that gives me a little bit of glow on my cheek. And you see I'm staying out of like when I smile, it's out of my lines. I love glowy stuff and we have so much glowy stuff in the studio. I love it. And I'm just going to put a little bit up there and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to buff one more time and my eyes are warming up. So I'm going to take a little bit of some more powder under here. So, you know, again, your eyes have a tendency to warm up and I have a ton of eye product under there. So as you're applying, you know, concealer and liquids and gel. Okay, there we have it. Jeez, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm down to nobody watching me now because I have terrible internet. Okay, we're back. And uh, all that I did was I just picked this up and I'm just starting to soften up. Hey, Kathy. And I'm blending out again now. Okay, good. So uh, the next step is, so let's recap. I've got on my brow my brow primer. I have on brow fiber. I have my 3-in-1 foundation on in soft beige and an ivory. And I applied it with a foundation brush so I could get a good amount of coverage. And then I buffed it out with a complexion brush. You can also, if you want a sheer effect, you just use the complexion brush. I keep buffing and buffing and used uh, the clear shine underneath my eye 
with the brow highlighter and all over my face and under my eyes. I have put on the dual bronzer uh, under my cheeks with the brow highlighter in the rose gold. And now I'm going to just add a teeny tiny a bit of some blush uh, on the apple of my cheek. And I am going to use, what shall I use? See, so these are like all my palettes that I have. And I have a ton of blush colors. Okay, so I'm going to use just a color that is one I picked up along the way. It's like a terracotta. And I'm just going to use a little bit on the apple of my cheek. I have a tendency to match what's on my lip with my cheek. It's just my personal preference. You don't have to do it. Um, but I like just a little bit of some cheek color. You can see how subtle that is. And again, I'm going to buff it down just one more time. So you can see I'm just buffing and layering. It's all about layering, 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 layering. Okay, now, last thing I'm going to do on my eyes is I'm just going to use the hazel. There's my palettes in there. And I'm going to use the hazel um, shadow, which is kind of like a goldy green. So if you, I'm going to pull this up so you can see. Right? Goldy green. And I'm loading my brush. And I'm going to just apply it right above. And I'm just letting that application just go slightly above the crease. So look at the difference. So, you know, when you see me all dressed up and I like to say be appropriate to your environment, um, you know, I, I don't think this is too much. Some people would think that this is too much. It just depends on, again, uh, what environment are you going to be seen and do you care? <laughs> because sometimes it's just about wanting to, to look good and feel good and what the hell, wear what you want at the end of the day. Okay, so next, again, eyes are open. Did you notice that? My eyes are open. I have not closed them to do this because I'm looking at the mirror and I keep zooming in and going back to see what do I look like far away? How blended is that far away? Can you see? So, and then I'm gonna just take a, another brush. And you know, I'm a fan of, again, these brushes that are pointy and fluffy. And I'm going on the inside and between each eye and after I blend, I'm actually wiping off on my towel. You know, working towel. Remember everybody, a key to beautiful makeup is being sure that you're blending properly. And you can see, really, this is all about brushes and blending. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for eyeshadow. Uh, I'm gonna use just one more coat of my powder. Okay, so powder, clear shine, okay? And I'm going up here, now we're blending these colors together, no lines of demarcation. Okay, no lines. So literally it's smooth. And the way that I just applied this to, this is last me all freaking day. You hear me? Like I could probably go to sleep with this still on because of the way I applied it. And if I wanted to, I can also just take a little bit of that shadow color that I just put on my lid and go underneath here as well. It's just another trick. It'll help to keep the liner on. Okay, and again, blending one more time. So you can see like after each time I apply, I'm blending down. You never just leave it. You know, you gotta blend, 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 blend. Okay, um, so next is gonna be mascara. Again, my XLXL mascara is my friend for life. I store it upright in my little uh, lip container or my pencil container. And this has got a huge brush. I freaking love this stuff. You're gonna see, you know, I'm a huge fan of lash extensions. I said that again last week. You know, you do have to, it's time and money. That's it. Uh, I use the Lash Grower. And I use our new lash, which keeps my lashes from looking so damn puny. And you can see the difference that lashes make. I actually have a whole article called How Lashes Changed My Life. 
because I truly believe lashes and brows and skin. If you got that and maybe some tight lining, look at that, you guys. Just look at the difference between my eyes, between mascara and this, right? I mean, this is, this is just, I'm awake, you know? I'm totally awake. Okay, good. Here we go. And again, the XLXL mascara is probably one of the best mascaras I've ever used in my entire life. And I got a shedding of a brush. And then, you know, I have two huge dogs, which I'm surprised they have kept quiet since I have been talking this whole time. They are outside, but I have white dog hair from one end of my house to the other, which ends up on my face and brushes and eyes. It's fantastic. All my clothes. But you see how I'm, when I'm putting my mascara on, I'm aiming and I have a, I have a mirror in front of me, which was what I didn't have last week. So I could actually see, but I am painting individually each lash. Now, if I really am wanting to be fancy, I have these spoolies and they're tiny and they have hair in them. So make sure they're all hairless. And then I can sometimes go in and right into the corners and separate when i have clients this is what i do because you want to have separated lashes but i think for all intents and purposes this pretty darn good okay great all right so the last thing is i got mascara on uh, i've got my hazel eyeshadow is i'm going to add a little bit of this noble nude so i already put the stain on so the stains on so i'm adding a nude on top and I could add a red, I could add anything I want on top. Sometimes I won't even do anything when I'm here. I'm just trying to get out the door and then I'll put whatever glosses in my bag. You saw my bag. So I have probably 20 lip glosses that I carry around with me in that pa in that pouch. So I'm going to take this and all that I'm doing is going over and it's going to leave me just a hint of color and some saturation. I brought a pencil out, but the reality is, is I don't really use the pencil much. And uh, I don't have tissues on here, but I probably would blot. And I'm going to just go one more little trip around with my powder. And I'm going to put some concealer on now. And I really, I just, they really think I needed a little bit. I don't think I need a ton. So this is the light medium concealer. I'm going to put it on the back of my hand because I, I want to make sure I'm not using a ton of this product. You really just need a little, little bit. And again, I'm going to buff it on with my finger. And I'm going to smile. But, you know, I'm letting my eye products work and my foundation work and everything else. I, I don't think you should be relying, you know, only on concealer in order to brighten up the area underneath your eyes. And you can see I'm just taking that brush again and I'm smiling, but you know, it works. It brightens it up. And I'm gonna take some more powder. And I'm setting it. And here you have it. Does anybody have any questions? because I think that's all I got for you today. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything that I wanted to say uh, about this again. You know, simple and easy makeup. I can teach you how to do this. Watch these tutorials over. I will put up brushes that I recommend along with this video on the on the website page on, or I'm sorry, on our Authentic Beauty Cosmetics page, along with the products I used. I will replay this. You can watch this again for those of you who I know who are working. Uh, I know that there was a lot of concern. Please play this again. So uh, you can play this at your leisure and watch the technique. Uh, I will work on this and try to make it better for you every week. Um, I wasn't as nervous. Next week's will be coming from Scotland. So uh, I'm looking forward to showing you my, I'll be in Edinburgh, I'll be in Dublin actually for three days and I will be sanitized and take care of myself and everything else. I'm, I'm not too concerned about going as long as I don't get it while I'm over there that, and I can enjoy my vacation, that would be good. And thank you all for watching. I appreciate all your support. I had so many comments this week. I had people call in uh, and everything. So um, again, I'll do a face chart. I will do, and maybe even I'll do this look on somebody 
Um, God, I would have to do it tomorrow. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I'll break it down for you um, one by one and uh, explain it in another little video. Okay. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye.